Thank you very much. My mother tongue is Swedish, so I could understand uh, a little bit what you were talking about and that you were saying nice things about me. Thank you very much. Um, I am a Finn, though, although my mother tongue is Swedish. I'm coming from a school called Svenska Handelshögskolan. Svenska Handelshögskolan. Uh, and that means that we teach in Swedish, because Finland is a bilingual country, although only uh, just below 6% of the population have Swedish as their mother tongue, but it is an official language, have an official educational system, um, and we teach in Swedish. We belong to the Swedish language system, and uh, do teach in English as well to, to, to accommodate uh, exchange students. Um, but I'm a Finn, though, because I've uh, lived in... In my, no, I lived in Finland for years, but my ancestors been in Finland for a thousand years, speaking Swedish. So, just so you get a little bit of that background. It's also another thing, before coming here, my wife and I watched a little bit about information about Iceland, because I already read about Iceland before. Uh, and there was one video about foreigners who uh, lived in Iceland, and talked about uh, Iceland, and talked about you people. And they said one interesting thing, well, a few of them said, that there are um, resemblances between people in Iceland and people in Finland. So, maybe we will get well on together. Yeah. Now, you may think that the topic here is provocative, and it sounds provocative, and also the subtitle, but I feel honestly and earnestly that this is extremely important. So, thank you, you people from House School at Eastlands, inviting me here to talk about something that I really find important and, and, and really like to share with you. And that is uh, the problems with marketing. Because marketing is in crisis in the Western world, at least, and uh, has to reinvent itself. And the question is, is, will it be possible? So, let's see what I think about it, what perhaps to do about it. Because it is in crisis. There are academic studies, as well as studies made by consultancy firms that clearly show this, that marketers are less and less important in firms, less and less important for top management, less and less important for people in the boardroom, and uh, less and less important for... Um, excuse me... <clears throat> I have some papers here I just want to have visible for me, myself. And less and less important for uh, the customers as well. And uh, we, we just see that. Now, this point, marketing managers do not last very long in big companies. That's maybe more North American than the rest of the Western world. Uh, but, but the rest is clearly there. And then we have the final thing here. Non-marketing specialists do not really think marketing is something very honorable. They more think that you try to make people buy things they don't need and don't want. And when you ask a non-marketer, what's marketing, they will say advertising. Now, marketing is so much more than that. But, so th there is clearly, there is a problem. So what is marketing then? And uh, I'd like to just give two dimensions here. As a philosophy, it is uh, a mindset, a set idea spread throughout the company and overseen by top management. I mean that marketing is an attitude, as a philosophy, throughout the organization, hopefully. Uh, and that has to be uh, supported and overseen and managed by top management. It must be leadership there. That's what marketing as a philosophy is. Now, if the goal of marketing, and this is clearly somewhat theoretical, so I open up it for you, but it is like this. The marketing, the goal for marketing is, is to engage the firm with the customers' processes and processes with the goal to support those customers so they can achieve their goals in life and thereby also the firm can make money on that. What this means is actually that the firm should become relevant for the customer, engage itself in the customer's processes, understand what our customers are doing, what do they want to achieve by their doings, and then after that, see how can we help these customers out as well as possible. That's what the goal for marketing should be. Now, then we have these traditional models 
the marketing mix approach and the 4P models, which is one way of trying to operationalize this. And it had worked very well for fast-moving consumer goods in the past and still works there fairly well. But out that, is those models become disasters because they do not really reflect the ideas of the philosophy of marketing nor the ideas of this goal for marketing. So formulate this a little bit simpler. The goal for marketing must be to relate the firm to its customers, make the firm relevant to its customers. I call it customer management, but it could be called, of course, anything else. Now, today it is very important, therefore, to think about marketing when it's implemented in the firm, that we have to achieve goals on several levels. It's not only persuade customers to buy, which is what the traditional models of marketing manages to do. It's also to keep the customers, create satisfaction, get the customer to pay us more. But moreover, the ultimate goal, more or less, is to grow customers, meaning create trusted relationships, loyalty, customers that are committed to the firm, and therefore not only share their wallet with us, but also share their heart and minds with us. And that's what marketing needs to, to, to look at. Now, if you look at marketing as customer management, and this, this idea that relate to the firm, to the customer today, how does it function? Well, traditionally... Let me see. I'm jumping. No. Yes. The... The, the, the uh, situation is that it looks like this. That uh, there's a number of business functions and business processes that are important for the customer, that are involved in, the re in relating the firm to the customer. Customers, especially when we move outside fast-moving consumer goods, but even there, to a growing extent, will, of course, be influenced by conventional marketing, advertising, and various sorts of market communication, price offers, campaigns, all those things. But also by sales, by CRM systems, by logistics, supply chain management, by uh, customer service, which could be anything from call centers to service centers to things like that, or uh, repair, maintenance activities, installing, and then something up to the left with I called hidden services. That's invoicing, that's service recovery, handling complaints and failures and fixing them, and uh, documentation about how to use products and services and so forth. All those things are hidden services because they are important, important for the customers, but the firms don't see it as important for the customer. Then consider them operational, administrative or financial routines, whereas the customers consider them nuisances most of the ways. Don't understand the invoice, can't get the problem fixed because it's so complicated, and uh, so on and so forth. So there's a lots of things that are important for the customer these days, and conventional marketing is just one thing there. And it doesn't only look as bad for marketing as on the previous picture. It is badder. It's worse in correct English. Uh, just to refer to a study made by Center for Service Leadership, in, 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 in America. Uh, they they, they uh, discussed with CEOs and, and other commercial, commercially responsible managers in big American firms about the customer. The question was how to handle the customer successfully. And not even once in the discussion, as Stephen Brown reports, did the respondents here mention marketing as being something of importance when handling customers. Not even once. Think about that. Not even once. And they were discussing customer management. Marketing is in trouble. Now, this is only one study, but this comes from all over, this same information. So the conclusion is that in customer management, other functions than marketing are important to success. Sales is important to success, but not only sales. They were talking about customer service, about transportation, deliveries, and all of those things. Marketing only creates brand awareness and makes promises. The other functions 
do the rest. Then the question is, what's important for the customer? Well, uh, making promises, creating brand awareness is great when you want to get customers. And it doesn't take you very far when we come to keeping customers, especially growing customers and creating loyal customers and trusting relationships between them and us. So, there is a dirty little secret with conventional marketing. Please read for yourself. Let me repeat it. Every function except marketing is involved in keeping and growing customers and building customer loyalty. Marketing aims at getting customers only. Isn't that awful? If we're in marketing, I think we are doing something serious. It is. Of course, I'm a little bit now exaggerating this. For some businesses, especially fast-moving consumer goods, but for most This is this what it is. So, what, what, what takes really place in an ongoing customer relationship? If so just a look at that. This is a model, I hope it can be seen up there. I had no idea that the audience would be this big, so um, I'm not sure. But what it, it, it is a, a, a model of customer relationships. The inner, innermost circle says that Customers must feel more and more, getting more and more value out of having to do with given term, using their products or service, regardless of what products or service we're talking about. On the outermost circle, called um, a distinct communication process, that's the traditional conventional marketing activities, advertising, events, direct mail, uh, internet marketing, these days mobile uh, marketing, and uh, pricing and all those things. The traditional conventional marketing. On the innermost circles is r the real world. The interactions. It's called the interactions process. The interactions over time between the customer and the various functions and processes, products and services, information, people, tangible, intangible things between the customer and the firm. And uh, conventional marketing basically handles the outer circle. And only standardized physical products is in the inner circle. That's why fast-moving consumer goods still can manage with our conventional marketing models fairly well. And everyone else really doesn't uh, use marketing to, to its full potential. And marketing, generally speaking, becomes marginalized more and more. Because what's important for customers to become satisfied, to become loyal to wanting to continue buying from a given firm is what goes on in the inner circle. Now, there are all the interactions that's now I taken care of by other business functions. Using the products, interacting with the service process, interacting with hidden services, and just you name it. So, the problem we have today is marketing just takes care in its conventional way of a small part of what's important for a customer. No... No wonder top management realizes that marketing doesn't have a role on, on the board. Marketing doesn't have a major role in top managed strate management strategic decisions. Because marketing just does something tactical somewhere to get those customers. But others will make sure that we can do business on a continuous basis. And please remember, if you go up to, to, to the strategy guru, the late Peter Drucker, who mentioned... Out of the two things, the two only things he said was important for firm is to make sure the firm has customers. With traditional, it's considered to be marketing's role together with sales. And clearly, marketing can't take responsible for having customers these days. So, the problem is when there's so much more on the inner circle than just a standardized physical product. So, core is marketing. What to do? Where to go? There are two possibilities. One is to say, well, who cares? Let's do what we can to be even more good at persuading customers to buy. Be even more efficient in creating brand awareness. Making promises even more effectively. And let's hope the rest of the firm can take care of those customers so they don't come back in our face again and we have to persuade them to come back again. And, of course, the others don't do it automatically because they are not implied 
to think about customers, those who are implied in other business functions. Their role is to do something else. And managing customers on top of the else. And that is one of the keys here important to reinventing marketing, to do something like that. So I don't think this is something that is very interesting for marketing as an academic discipline. Why would we want to marginalize ourselves who do marketing research? And it's absolutely not interesting for business practice. It's devastating if marketing remains like this and gets even more marginalized. And it's absolutely a problem if tough management believes that even though other functions are important for customer management, we give the responsibility for customer management to a marketing department and a sales department. Because then there's something totally wrong in the firm. And that is not a very unusual situation. The other possibility is to say, hey, let customer management win here. Let's reinvent marketing. Let's make sure that we do something to give marketing a new content so we really can live up to the philosophy of marketing, being an attitude of mind, a mindset spread throughout the organization and overseen by top management. Not overseen by, by the, the head of the marketing department because this person is very important for the full-time marketers, the professionals, but have difficulties to get anybody else reporting to him or her and telling anybody else that you should think differently, do differently. That won't work. It's only top management who can take that responsibility. So where does the responsibility for management rest then? If you look at, at marketing from, from a customer management point, point of view, well, regionally, locally, or um, divisionally, it's the manager there in the region, the local man, division manager, who has to assume responsibility for the customer. Total responsibility for the customer, for getting customers, for keeping customers, for growing customers. Nobody else can take this responsibility. And on top of everything, then the CEO, managing director, of course. It's only their responsibility for marketing as this uh, over, uh, or every all-encompassing customer management can, can reside. What's the role then of full-time marketers in a situation like this? I mean, what's the role of the marketing specialist? Because, of course, we, they, we marketing specialists, are still needed. Uh, the, the, somebody has to take responsibility for the traditional marketing uh, activities, for the role for creating brand awareness, for uh, making promises. But there's an additional role for traditional marketing also, and that is to become uh, and serve as internal consultants to top management in customer-related issues. To be the ones, because the marketing professionals, full-time marketers, uh, the ones who know the customer and know the importance of the customer and know how to handle the customer. But the important thing is to spread this news. And as internal consultants, I just call it, on, but not on behalf of the marketing director, that will not work. But on behalf on the, of the CEO to work as, as those who internally educate, demonstrate, show what to think, how to do. But when in this capacity, the internal marketing uh, are asked to execute, to be the ones who come and do it here in my customer relationship, my interactions with customers in the, in, the, in the hotel lobby and all that, then the answer is no, you got to do it because otherwise it goes wrong. And that's something that comes very easily. And people in the line, the line manager will say, well, no, no, you were educated and told us, please come and do it as well. That then doesn't work because it's through the organization that customer management is executed. Full-time marketers can only be exactly what is said than internal consultants. And it is tricky to do that. But that is a way, uh, that is something that is important. Now, moving towards marketing as customer management. Uh, what to do? Well, there are some major pitfalls that really are important. Four of them. The traditions, the obsession with products, the focus on value in exchange, uh, and the time. So let's look at that a little bit now. Um, the traditions, they hold back. The traditions hold back. You know, 
It's called organizational culture or corporate culture. Traditional management structures and systems. Traditional values. They say no change. Or if they say change, it's kind of marginal structural change. Let's reshuffle the, organization, the organizational structure, but don't do it so it looks very different because that's become so difficult to handle. Well, it does. But minor shifts in organizational structure doesn't help. Minor shifts in governance structures doesn't help more than a little bit. No change. That's what normally traditions say. And the customers are crying for change. Because customers these days want firms that deliver good service, that support their just everyday life processes or organizational processes, business customers. And firms have to start deliver that. And that requires real changes. The second thing, which really is extremely important, and that is the attitudes oriented towards products. We talk, I mean, you're representing business here in Iceland. You probably, regardless of whether you are in a service business or product business, you talk about our products. And, uh, and excuse me if I say so to somebody who doesn't, you belong to those who see the light. Congratulations. But generally speaking, talk about products, our products. We market our products, we develop our products, we campaign for our products. And your employees know that it is our products that are important. Customers couldn't care less about your products. Even when you have products, they don't care if you really go down to, to it, beyond the surface. What they care about is what can these products and services and the information do to help me forward in my life process or business process, depending on if I am a customer, uh, individual customer or, 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 or representing a, a business customer. That's what's important to customers. And we have to rethink this product talk. But each and every time, regardless of whether you're a product firm, especially if you're a service firm, you talk about our products. What you do is what I'm doing right now, and this is the market I have behind my back. You turn your back towards the customer and look at your products and ain't it great? Now let's ask the marketing department to persuade them to understand it's great. I mean, that's, when put this way, it sounds stupid, doesn't it? But you know, this is so often the reality, if you excuse me saying so. So getting away from this talking product and talking, what are we doing for customers? We're supporting them. We're facilitating the processes. Everybody should think in terms of what service do we, through our service processes or physical products or combinations of them, together with our hidden services and other activities, provide our customers with so that they become better off in their life. And the third is this was called value and exchange, meaning that it's the traditional way of looking at value for customer is that value is in this gadget here. Value in, in the product. And then we exchange it for money with the customer. We deliver the value to the customer. Has never been true. But it hasn't been such a big deal when competition's been minor or no, and when customers been less informed before the days of the internet and all those things and with lower educations, generalists and so forth. Uh, but today it's devastating to think in terms of this. There's no value in this gadget here. It's only when I realize I can use it. It works when there's value in it. And that goes for everything. All products, all service, all information, anything we offer to our customers. The value starts to emerge only when the customer uses it and realizes it does some good for me. Makes me better off one way or the other. Either I can measure it in money cost savings, or uh, more revenues I can get because I'm in a business, I can sell more with the help of this, or uh, in uh, terms of emotional or other attitudinal things. It's, it's, it's nice. Value better off can be a lot of things depending on what the customers talk about. Only then is there value. So we must get away if the customers aren't interested in if there's a value in the products they are interested if there becomes value when they use them. And this 
the, the, the management rhetoric here again, it's another product case. Probably in Iceland, as well as in Finland, as well as in, in, in the rest of the Western world when I've been, managers likes to say, excuse me again, to say that we deliver added value to our customers. We produce value for our customers. And as soon as one says like that, and everybody says like that, from top manager to the one who's installing uh, a, a piece of, of uh, a, lawn, a laundry machine and, and, or, or a refrigerator in the customer's place, this person will again do this trick. Here's the refrigerator and here's the customer's there, but this is important. You don't deliver added value to your customers. You facilitate your customers' value creation. And as soon as you start change the rhetoric, the management rhetoric, people start to think differently. And that will influence the attitudes. And the attitudes will influence behavior. And when starting using service talk, like we facilitate customers' value creation, and we offer service support or services or help to our customers, you start to become customer-focused. You see the, the need for broadening the interest for the customer in the firm outside a marketing and sales department. And you need to see the importance of customer management. So this pitfall, it's there, but it has to be overcome. Firms think that they produce value, but they do not. Reality is customers who create the value. And time's never right. I mean, time's never right. Good times, we're running so fast, so we have, don't have time to really rethink. I mean, why fix a winning case is a saying. Sometimes that's good, but it may not be so good in this situation if our, marketing, our view of marketing in a firm is very limited, traditionally limited. Because good times are followed by bad times, as you and Iceland know very well, as we know in Finland, as I've known before as well. So you better prepare during the good times for the bad times. Prepare for the bad times during the good times. And when the bad times, there are no money, no time to, to change again. So time's never right. Make time right. Because change is inevitably needed. So, moving towards customer management then, what would that really mean? What that would require? And I have a seven point, um, I don't know, program could be called here. Seven points, seven challenges to <coughs> be interested in. They'll, uh, there and I go through them, uh, finally go, go, go through them during the last 20 minutes uh, in, in, or 15 to 20 minutes in, in, in some detail. Um, What's marketing? The other challenge, who are the marketers? The third, where's marketing in an organization? The fourth, how to organize for marketing? Fifth, how to plan marketing? Sixth, how to prepare the organization for marketing? And seven, what terms should be used internally for marketing? And when I say marketing here, I mean marketing as what I'm called customer management. This approach towards not only getting customers, but also keeping and growing customers to, to uh, relational, loyal customers who also give a big enough part of their heart and mind to us. That's one which requires a much broader view of marketing. So let's go through this. What is marketing? The first challenge. And uh, well, based on this, very other, it's an attitude of mind rather than a function only. And this really this goes back to the philosophy of marketing, which is nothing new. It's been there for uh, decades. The problem is that marketing research has developed models, or academic research has developed marketing models that just make a mess of that philosophy. I'm talking about the marketing mix and the 4P model and varieties of that. It, now we have to take a fresh start to this and see marketing really is an attitude. It's thinking the customer is important to the firm and the future of the firm. Therefore, the customer is important to me as well, and my future in the firm. Wherever I am in the organization, this also goes for, goes for somebody who never sees an, uh, an ultimate customer. Because um, those of you who remember 
a, a big story in the 80s. That was the transformation of SAS, Scandinavian Airlines, from a disastrous airline to the business class, high service, very successful airline it was then in the 90s. Jan Carlson was the new CEO who did it. He said, among other things, one is, was this. If you don't have customers, real customers, you do have internal customers. Everybody in the organization is re 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 relying on somebody else who will do something to make it possible for me to, to provide the right answer, a quick answer, in a pro polite and nice way to an uh, end customer. So there are customers in a change in the organization. Like, so this goes for everybody, this attitude of mine. Understanding the importance of the customer for me in my job, even though I am far outside whatever marketing department there might be in the organization. The full-time <clears throat> marketers. This is a concept that were introduced by my colleague from Stockholm University, Evert Gummerson, full-time marketer, part-time marketer. Full-time marketers, they have the traditional responsibilities, yes. But, you know, other than responsibility for marketing, research, external communication, price campaigns, and all those things that uh, full-time marketers may have in the marketing department. Other than that, they are normally in the wrong place at the wrong time with the wrong customer contacts to influence customer management effectively. I mean, we in the marketing department, we are not there where the customer is when he or she feels that there's a problem or feels that I'd like to buy some more now. Or whatever happens. We're not there. We're always too late. So, firm can't rely on the full-time marketers doing more than just this, what they're supposed to do, make promises, create brand awareness. So customers get interested in, uh, in, in, in thinking about the firm and perhaps buying from the firm. But marketing has to be instilled as a customer-focused attitude of mind among employees on all levels throughout the organization. All levels means not only those in contacts with the external customer, but also in back office support parts of a function, among supervisor, middle managers, upper middle management, top management, CEOs. But the customer is important, not only finances, but other things that are also important. Evert Gummerson calls the rest of the people part-time marketers because their main job is not marketing, it's to do something else. Drive the delivery truck, for example. Or um, being, be, be, being the clerk on the other side of, of, of the encounter in a bank. Or I mean, check in in the hotel. Or, or uh, wherever. And their supervisors and managers and so forth. They are the part-time need to think about the customer. Whereas the marketing specialists need to do that on a full-time basis. But then, following from this, who executes marketing then? And we really need to think correctly here. It follows, of course, from the first challenge, that everyone in an organization who directly or indirectly, through internal service, having internal customers, influence customers, external or internal customers, preferences and quality perceptions are involved in the firm's marketing process. Everyone who one way or the other, directly or indirectly, through what they are doing, influence whether customers want to continue buying from us. Whether they want to start feeling and some kind of emotional connectedness to the firm, becoming loyal customers, being grown as customers. Everyone who some has, has an of influence on achieving that, They are involved. And we just have to take this seriously. We can say, hey, it can't be like that. I mean, marketing is not that important. Well, the customer is that important. And if the customer is that important, remember Peter Drucker, one of the two, only two things a firm really has to do is to make sure it has customers. Then marketing is important. If we define the marketing and manage it, organize it correctly. Today, marketing becomes less and less important because it's only a wall in a fraction of all this getting customers, creating brand awareness, which is also important, yes, but that's not the whole thing. Not what strategically is considered important these days in more and more firms by top management, as it seems. 
So there are these full-time marketers, the specialists, who know what they are doing, who know what it's all about, and do it on a full-time basis. And there are the part-time marketers, employees with dual responsibilities, who also then influence the customer's perception. And the important thing here is to understand that the part-time marketers may be so much more important than the full-time marketers, excuse me for saying so. Because today, the most important thing is not to get customers. That's important too. But it's so much more important to keep them and grow them. And that's where the part-time marketer becomes important. And where the full-time marketers are in the wrong place at the wrong time with the wrong customer contents. As Gevet, it's Evert Gummetson who wrote that once. And I endorse it fully. Well, and you know it as well, that it's like that. Exactly as the, 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 the CEOs and commercial responsible people at Stephen Brown out of the Center for Service Leadership talked with, uh, with the topic who's responsible for customer. And we didn't n- mention conventional marketing, full-time marketing at all, because they understood that others are so much more important. So, we really have to think about this. How do we then make the, full, the, the part-time marketers interested in the customer? And that is also a great challenge. Now, let's see. <clears throat> let's take some other points first. Where's marketing the organization then? I mean, where is it? We, we, we used to think that in a little bit bigger firm marketing, it's in the marketing department, fifth floor, main building, or anything like that. And a little bit smaller for it's a group, but they are those people who are assigned marketing. That's how we used to think about. But you know, marketing is everywhere in the organization. It's not in the marketing department. It's not part of the sales department. It's everywhere. Uh, so you can see that it is a challenge. Number three. Marketing is to engage the firm with customers' practices and processes, to make the firm relevant for the firm. So... We, we need to make sure that we can identify customers. Well, traditional marketers can do that, full-time marketers. Establish a relationship with them. Sell first time, full-time marketers and salespeople can do that. But maintain and enhance relationships. Then comes the part-time marketers in, and marketing just spreads throughout the organization. And of course, there is a possibility we'll have to terminate sometimes some relation with customers, which should not, of course, be overseen, but, but that's not the big thing. But the important thing is, marketing is nowhere in particular in, the, in an organization. It's everywhere. It transcend, transcends boundaries between departments, specialist functions, and specialist disciplines in universities who are teaching, as we at Hanken School of Economics, Lenska Handel School are doing, we teach all this within the marketing discipline. And we're the only one, I think, who, who are in, 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 in the service society today, and the rest of the departments at our school are firmly in the industrial society which doesn't exist anymore, as it used to do. I mean, it exists to some extent, but in new fashions. So universities are awful in this as well. I don't know how it's here, but uh, hopefully a little bit better at least. Not the same. Yeah, it's, I mean, everywhere. So we teach the wrong things too. It's funny, when I on the master's level teach our marketing students, this, when we really get deep into this, we start much earlier, they start to say, why don't you teach everybody this at Hank? And I say, yes, yes. Why don't I? <laughs> I'm a victim of the organizational structure like you in firms often are. Break them. In firms you can do it because you have the, 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 the ultimate uh, uh, um, profit function which tells you if you don't do something, we'll be out of business. But universities, we're there in business even though we don't do much. So, (laughs) it's a problem both for marketing practice and marketing as an academic discipline. No, that's right. And here, you know, when there's so many people, no questions are allowed. (laughs) (laughs) But you're right. You're right. 
And I never teach in groups larger than 30 on the master's level. On the bachelor's level, yes, we do have up to 150 and 200 in the, in the first years, yes. But no bigger than that, no bigger. Uh, we're a small business school. Fourth channel, how to organize marketing. Well, the answer here is can't be organized. Marketing cannot be organized in a traditional sense. But of course it can be organized. But not in the traditional way how we are used to think about organizing marketing. And here, you know, there's very, very little research into how to organize marketing in the academic literature. Because this is considered so difficult. How, how, how to really get into this? But, you know, marketing is everywhere in the organization, wherever customer contacts exist. Wherever the customer is influenced, the customer's preference is influenced, the customers get input, do I want to continue buying? Do I want to become a loyal customer, a move towards some kind of, of, of loyalty like that? So we, we, we just need to think, to realize this. So marketing is nowhere in particular in an organization. And still this has to be handled. Marketing still has to be somehow managed and of course somehow organized. So, first of all, marketing, well, we must just accept it. It can only be instilled as an attitude of mind, a mindset among the people in the organization. There's no other way to organize marketing uh, for the, the most of the people in the organization. It has to be instilled as an, or, or as an attitude of mind. People have to start to realize the importance of the customer for the firm and my role for making sure the firm has customers on a continuous basis. And therefore, my role in making sure that the customers I'm now meeting today will want to continue to be customers with us in the future as well. And the ones who are supervising this, who are planning this, who are managing this further back in the organization have to think in the same way. Now, this is part-time marketers, part-time marketing. This is part-time because these people, these managers, have to think about other business functions as well. But we just can't say because of the rest is so important, the customer can be taken care of, our specialist in the marketing department, because then we revert to becoming more and more marginalized again. And the full-time marketers, they can, of course, be organized in a, in a department or in a group like that. That, that's possible. But here's one word of warning is important. As soon as you have a visible marketing department in an organization, you will have trouble convincing the rest of the people that the customer is important for them as well. Believe me, the psychological effect is fantastic. So when you start going out talking to the people about your role in making sure that customers will stay, your role as part-time marketers, they will ask, why do, why do we have that marketing department? Doesn't it? Don't the people there fulfill their duties very well then? Why should I? I have my hands full with uh, driving the delivery truck or taking care of technicalities of uh, checking in people in a hotel or uh, whatever it is. And that is... Uh, I mean, this question is, is very fair. So we have to make sure that we do this in an intelligent way. Don't make full-time marketing departments very visible. That's one thing. Another thing is, don't make it too big. A third thing is, maybe you can put it away totally somewhere. A fourth thing is, maybe we don't need full-time marketers very much. But we do need some. Uh, but this is something to think about. My best example of this is Handelsbanken, out of Sweden and now spreading over Scandinavia and uh, Great Britain and the Baltic states. Already in 1969, when Jan Valanda came in as the new CEO, uh, they started to change. And one thing they did is to get rid of the big visible marketing department, make sure that we make everybody interesting in the customer, in the firm, using the full-time marketer's expertise more as internal consultants than anything else. 
and finding out we don't need as many people that was in the big marketing department. We still need some of them like that. Don't do too much of this conventional marketing. It's un- unnecessary. Funny thing, a few years back I saw statistics of in, in Sweden about how big banks, you know, Nordea, SEB and, 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 and the other bigs, and, and Handelsbank, and how much money they were spending on marketing communication. Handelsbank has spent about 5% of what each of the other banks did. At the same time, there came in customer satisfaction studies, which said that Handelsbank, and, well, they were up here on the scale. The further up, the better. Then there was a huge gap, and then come the rest. And the next year, the same. Ten years back, the same. And they are also always more profitable than the average and often the most profitable bank in the area. So there's something they're doing correctly. They're doing a lot of other things as well in here. Uh, Decentralization, very firm uh, cost control and and, and things like that that have to be put together. But customer management, rethink the way you're doing. They're doing one other thing too, which I'm coming, coming back to shortly. But be careful with how you organize the full-time marketers who can be organized in one group department somewhere, but do you need to do it in that way? Can you do it in some other way? How to do marketing planning? Well, marketing has to be planned wherever marketing activities occur. And, And what are the marketing activities? Well, it's all those activities that influence the customer's willingness to buy for the first time, get customers, who influence the customer's preferences and willingness to continue buying, keep customer, and influence the customer's mindset and willingness to think that this is really is a preferred supplier to me as an organizational customer or individual customer, grow customers. So it's everywhere, the marketing activities. They have to be planned everywhere. So... <clears throat> It cannot be planned by full-time marketers in a marketing department if we have one. So the marketing department, if we have one, cannot plan marketing as customer management. They can plan their part of marketing, which relates to the conventional activities. Market research, making promises through marketing communication, campaigns, and in other ways like that, arranging events, um, doing this and that, but uh, no more than that. And that's not marketing planning. That's planning a minimal part. Well, at minimal, it's absolutely important, but just a part of total customer management. So we have to rethink this and say, all plans if have to include the customer aspect. It has to be the customer focused in all plans. So whatever we now are planning to do, how does this influence our customer's willingness to buy from us, to continue buying from us, to start feeling an emotional connectedness towards us? That's the way to pl- plan marketing. And of course, this has to be somehow organized. Most firms do a strategic plan or a corporate plan. Well, you, there you have to add then this customer focus and somehow integrate all the other business functions thinking about the customer, to find some way of some solutions for that. Now, this won't be easy. Nothing of these challenges to handle them will be easy, by the way. But, you know, they are desperately needed if you don't want to continue going down the drain in marketing become more and more a tactical issue somewhere in the organization that that nobody wants them to do more than to create an interest, make promises and create brand awareness, important issues, but not really important for managing customers. So we just have to be faced these challenges and change is needed. Budgets have to be prepared the same way. Then there is the Handelsbank way of doing it. Don't plan. Put goals, give resources, follow up strictly that every part of the organization achieve their goals. And if not, go quickly in and provide help. Find out what there is. And the result is wonderful for them. It's called beyond budgeting. It's, 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 it's a budgeting uh, principle that's growing and some other firms, especially in Norway it seems, to start to, big firms start to pick up on, on this, that don't do budgeting in a traditional way 
And that relates to how you do planning. So there are various ways of approaching this, but it has, can't be done traditionally. That's what I'm actually saying. And then coming towards the end, sixth and seventh left, um, how to prepare the organization, organization for marketing. One, without what's been called internal marketing, it actually is a lousy name, uh, and I'll explain soon why. But internal marketing as, tra- as a strategic management instrument, the focus on customer management cannot be achieved. Now, internal marketing, that was um, to tell you a little bit about the story. Researchers into service marketing in the 19, uh, late 1970s, early 1980s realized the importance of the part-time marketers or the importance of people outside the department of full-time marketers, to their importance to having customers and growing customers. And the literature, that, that, that's called interactive marketing, marketing that goes on interactions with customers, handled by the part-time marketers. And then they looked into what then was called personnel administration, which then became what today is called uh, human resource management. And say, well, can you provide any help? And the answer was no. Because as HRM today, personnel administration then, was very much geared towards internal issues of the organization. Recruiting, reward system, career systems, atmospheres, job satisfactions, but not for the sake of being more effective towards the outside world, the customers, just an internal issue. So service marketing researchers developed this quick fix called internal marketing. And organizational theorists, HRM theorists, they don't like it at all because they think that we are dilettants at this, and we are. But somebody has to do it because those who should do it don't do it, if you excuse me saying so, those of you who might be organizational theorists here. Uh, and if some of you are, are, are doing something, please, that continue. That's, that's desperately needed. Internal marketing is a way of how can we internally make sure that we get, we get employees that are motivated for thinking about the customer in the job, for performing as effective part-time marketers, to effectively make the customers willing to continue to do business with them and our firm. That's what internal marketing is called. So it said we have an internal marketing employees that has to be taken care of first before we go out to the external market. And uh, that, that, that's uh, what, what uh, <clears throat> internal marketing is all about. That's why it's called internal marketing. Um, we need this. We need this as a strategic way of thinking and strategic tools. It is something that should be on the top management teams on the CEO's agenda. It's not something we say that, hey, you marketers or you HRM people, you, you take care of this, which often takes the place. Because a lot of internal marketing goes on in firms. People even use the term internal marketing. But it is a complicated thing. Because there's this host of part-time marketers, so we must make sure that they can live up to their role as a, um, as, as uh, responsible for making sure that customers want to continue buying from the firm, being part-time market. And they never automatically prepared for this. And of course not. We are hiring people who are trained for thinking about other things, driving this delivery truck that we talk so often about, or repairing a piece of machinery or equipment uh, that we have sold to a business customer. Or uh, checking in people in the hotel, as I mentioned as example. And there are thousands of these examples, of course. There are, they, they are trained to do something else, which is what they should be trained basically to do. But we have to add on this attitude, this mindset of thinking about how do I do this so I influence the customer in the positive way that is wanted here. So... It's needed. Without that, we're going to have people who don't do the right thing with the customer. So we need that. All full-time marketers are prepared, but the part-time marketers are almost always unprepared, and we need this. But here, it is a strategic tool. It's not a tactical tool. Because the mo- 
most firms that say they do internal marketing, calling it that or not, what they're doing is training. We need to train our employees so they understand their role in the customer, understand the, train them to communicate with the customer. And that is fine. It is often, almost always, required. But training is not the most important internal marketing activity. Because training alone leads nowhere in the longer run. The most important marketing activity is the management support provided each and every day by managers, supervisors, on each and level, each level, supervisory, mid-management, upper mid-management, upper management, CEO level, if God and how big the organization is, and in small organizations, there are not many layers, every manager, and the leadership towards customer-focused behavior that they execute in every, everything they do as uh, managers. That is the most important internal marketing tool, the most important internal marketing activity. Because without this leadership, every training activity will just revert into nothing after a while. When people come back and there's the boss who says, well, I, that's good, yes, sometimes they'll tell me about it, but now the job has piled up here, so now we have to do work. And everyone realizes, oh, it's back to work again. And, 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 and the supervisor never supports the new ideas fully. Changes in reward systems do not take place. That clearly should be warranted and, 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 and things like, like that. So it is an, a tricky thing that can't be handled easily, unfortunately. And finally, seventh cha challenge. What term should we use for marketing then internally in the firm? I've talked about marketing here because somehow we all know at least at some level what, what's the topic. But please remember that I have to change... To I try to change totally what marketing means, what it's all about, as compared to the conventional attitudes and the conventional models that are implemented and taught uh, in most cases. But should we call it marketing? I have for uh, almost 15 years now, whenever I get the chance, said we should stop using the term marketing in firms. And some firms have. Uh, we should at some point stop using it in uh, academia as well. Uh, because today marketing is almost the worst term to use for customer management. It doesn't reflect what we are talking about. Marketing says, out to the marketing, move out on the market. Any other language I notice, you could take Swedish, marknadsföring, fur out on the market. In Finnish, markkinointi, out towards the market. And going to other languages, I've heard that it seems to be the same. Well, marketing is taken up by most languages, German, French, Italian, Spanish these days. And they all have the wrong connotation. Kind of attitude sticks and stays with the getting customer level. Get out onto the market. And the important thing is to stay on the market. Keep and grow the customers. So it's the wrong term. It doesn't say what it's all about. Now, that could be okay. If we just decide, yes, it's the wrong term, and it, these days it also includes staying on the market. But then comes the other reason why I think it's the worst term, or probably the worst term to use for what we're talking about. And that is, for most part-time marketers, the phrase, the term marketing means something negative. It means exactly this, something that, that is that making people buy things they don't need and don't even want. Persuade people to do things they, they shouldn't be doing. Why would I want to be involved with something like that? And that's a reaction among employees outside the group of marketing specialists, the full-term marketing, far too often. Not always, not for everyone, but mostly. And it is, I've seen lots of examples of this, where, where firms are trying to kind of push on and talk about marketing, remember, understand, and it won't go through very well, if at all. People stay reluctant to say that I ha have, would have anything to do with this. And they, they don't, don't get focused on the customer. So why, why fight a losing battle? 
Only when we talk about marketing as what the marketing department is doing, that's customer management, nothing else, then marketing is a good term. And when we want to broaden the scope of marketing, it's a lousy term. My suggestion is pick a term for customer management that fit for the internal, the, the culture in the organization, which people can relate to, which people can accept, which people can uh, uh, think positively about, and use that. Marketing is not an old term. I, I, it's around the year 1900 it was first came into use in the United States, by the way. And marketing as a phenomenon has always existed. So we don't have to continue using saying it that if we have old traditions with the term. We don't. It is almost the worst term to do. And back to, to uh, Handelsbanken, as I promised, although I guess I got to Handelsbanken in between ones. In uh, uh, very early 1970s, they, they came to this same conclusion. And they just said, the CEO said, that we can't call this marketing anymore. And then they were thinking, and then they... I exactly don't know who came up with, with the new word. Say, act, active kundkontakt in Swedish. Active customer contact. That's what we are doing. And that's what we are now educating everybody to understand what it is, give it a meaning, and make sure that they understand it and implement it. And, you know, the resistance went away. Like this. Because, yes, I have customer contact. Internal customers, so okay, I can understand that, that they depend on me and how I do. Active, well, I'm, yeah, I'm trying to be active. Well, I, maybe I haven't been as active, I'd say. So there's an interest and a willingness to listen, learn, and change. That's just one example. You could use anything else. And there are other firms, not too many, I'm afraid, smaller firms especially, that, that talk about things that fit their culture and their vocabulary. I think this is uh, also a very good piece of advice. So that's my view about this. Let's come and see the answer to my questions. <clears throat> can, is marketing a biggest mistake? And question number two, can it be reinvented? Well, the answer is, it, the answer is, it depends on the perspective taken, I would say. I mean, is it a mistake? Yes, definitely it is. It wasn't, but it is already, and it will become even bigger mistake if marketing stays within its conventional, attitudinal, and structural borders. It's a mistake. It will become more and more marginalized and more and more uh, unimportant to the customer, to top management, and to shareholders as well, for that sense, and for the society at large. Well, the answer is no, if marketing can and manages to reinvent itself. Both an academic discipline soon, but we'll see. And very quickly in so many businesses. Then the answer is yes. I'm sorry, then the answer is no, it's not a mistake. <laughs> then the answer is no. Now the other question, can it be reinvented? Well, the answer again is yes, it can be reinvented if we manage to think outside the conventional box. Then we can reinvent it. But if we don't do that, if we start to think that marketing is a one-function issue, mostly and or only something for specialists, we won't be able to reinvent marketing because it will be more of the same using new technologies and new distribution channels and new uh, whatever within the old frame. And the customers become more and more frustrated, top management more and more uninterested, shareholders more and more uh, and more uninterested and the society won't really get any support for marketing, at least, in the changes required there towards thinking about sustainability, ethical and moral issues, and, and things like that. That's my answer to the question, and I um, just ask you to think about it seriously and think about what's your answers and uh, what should be done to it then, perhaps. Thank you.
Thank you very much. There is no time for questions because many have to do other things and, and, and it's a too big group. But I don't know if Tor Hallod in the beginning said that the, you will have an availability to get these slides. You did, all right. And, and uh, secondly, uh, thank you for the applause. I get the impression that you probably thought that there is something in what I said. So take it seriously.